I want to do um, next year will be volume 30 um, of the Tayside and Fife Archaeological Journal. Um, I wanted to offer you a few thoughts um, on how this has uh, turned into what it is. Um, and a few questions that I want to ask at the end to you um, about publication. But first of all, why has Derek called his title Publish and Be Damned? Um, the grapevine is a wonderful thing. Um, and I always remember hearing rumors that the only reason that this journal came into being was to be the publication vehicle for the Scottish Urban Archaeological Trust um, and to make sure that Derek had somewhere to publish his papers. Um, I couldn't possibly comment. Um, now, when I was putting this together, I thought it would be really nice to put all the journals up on screen, and I think it looks quite good. Um, volume 1 to 23. Um, probably the most fun that I've had um, over this publication is choosing what the front cover is going to be each year, um, looking at what people have sent me, um, and trying to pick a, a nice image. Often um, with well-known people in it, like Mick Aston um, on the cover of volume 13. And for a while, I was trying to do it um, site or general view, artifact site or general view, artifact, but then it sort of lost its way. Um, but never mind. I think it, I think it definitely works. Um, and bringing us through to the most recent volume, volume 29, um, now freely available at this link. We also have published um, seven monographs, um, the last one in 2009, the first one back in 1997, um, largely all funded by Historic Scotland. And here hangs a point that's worth making. The real reason that this journal came into being um, was Gordon Barclay trying to clear the publication backlog um, by having a vehicle that people could offer their papers to. Um, and I've got some statistics uh, on that. I'll bore you to death within a minute. Um, so, monographs. Labours of love. Perth High Street excavation. Um, finally um, published uh, in the mid 2000s and now also freely available on the TAFAC website as PDF downloads. Um, but there are still copies available outside um, if, if any of you um, would like one. Um, and if you go to our website, um, you will find um, backgrounds to our publications um, and how you can access them. Clicking on the link. Um, will take you to the actual journal and each of the papers is individually um, downloadable. Um, the interesting thing is, um, here is a bit of boring statistics for you, but I think it's quite interesting. From the first journal in 1995 through to the most recent one, volume 29, if you look at this, um, the first four years of the journal, um, it was organized by Fife Council. Pete Yeoman and Sarah Govan um, were the editorial team. Um, then um, they gave the job to myself and Elizabeth Toms um, right the way through until 2015. Um, and since 2017, we've been digital only. We decided to go down that route for two reasons, uh, cost and the problem of storing lots of journals that nobody seemed to want to buy, um, so storage costs. Um, we are very slowly getting through our backlog, largely through to the, uh, thanks to the efforts of Catherine Smith. But look at this, this is quite interesting. Uh, that red bar will show you uh, journals when there were often several papers funded by Historic Scotland, which helped to cover the costs of the production of that journal. There still is an occasional HS-funded paper, but virtually all of them now are developer-funded. These are developer-funded excavations where there is a publication component that has been asked for by the local authority, and people offer them to TAFAC, um, and I say, yes, please, 
Um, and we are now publishing them online. And look at this. Um, the journal went completely mental in about 1998 when there were 18 papers in it. Um, I still find that very hard to believe. Um, there's been a sort of upward rate probably till about 2004, then it fell off, then it went up again. And it's leveled out now um, to about four papers in the journal. But that's the benefit of being digital because I think there is still a point in publishing, even if you only have three or four papers, it's still worth doing that online because the real benefit of being online is dissemination. It's accessible worldwide. That didn't used to be the case um, with hard copies, um, unless somebody wanted to pay vast postage costs. Um, how do the papers um, look at the different areas of TAFAC? Um, I've cheated here because I've stuck Dundee in with Angus, but never mind. Um, it's pretty good. It's a pretty good slip, uh, split. There's not really much of a domination by one particular area. Um, and fairly consistent over time, although I have to say Fife didn't do very well um, in that gap there, um, but it is catching up. And look, we've managed to annex some bits of Scotland occasionally as well. Um, and 12 papers um, that cover Scotland um, as a whole. Um, it's worth putting um, Tafadge into perspective as to how it fits into the other Scottish archaeological publications. PSAS, um, the national publication um, of the Society of Antiquaries of Scotland. Um, the Scottish Archaeological Journal, which tends to be more West Coast based. Um, Transactions of Dumfries and Galloway Natural History Society, very much South Western based. Um, Northern Studies, which is multidisciplinary, but it does occasionally publish archaeology. Um, and the same with the fourth naturalist and historian. Some of these are now beginning to go digital. Um, I've been advising recently the fourth naturalist and historian that wants to only go digital um, and not publish hard copy anymore. And the original journal of record, still going, Discovery and Excavation in Scotland, um, which is still hard copy, but is available as digital as well. And now, digital only, SARE, the Scottish Archaeological Internet Reports, OASIS, which is this wonderful developer-funded grey literature, which you can still access if you really want to, um, and Internet Archaeology. So, here's some thoughts for you. Do we need more local journals to fill the blank spaces? Um, Borders, Highland, Moray, Northern and Western Isles, for example. That's fine, but how would they be funded? Um, and is open access online now the preferred format for the reasons um, that I've told you earlier on? As the current editor of TAFAJ, I'd like to see more papers from local society and groups to complement those from professional contractors. All the papers are peer reviewed and should come with a publication grant, but I'm always happy to seek grant aid for people if they want to publish things. Um, it's, it's not difficult to do if you try hard enough. Um, I feel very strongly there's a real need for papers that discuss and th synthesize the results of the many excavations that have now taken place across Scotland. The study of material culture in particular suffers from the lack of such overviews. This is particularly the case for some developer funded work that may only ever up to end up as grey literature. Again, how's that going to get funded? Um, there's no real archaeology program at Historic Scotland anymore, um, which might have funded things like that in the past. What's the alternative? Um, so, I'd like to thank all those people who provide publication grants each year for the production of the journal, whether they like it or not. Our typesetter, Christina Unwin, the TAFAC Editorial Committee and the main TAFAC Committee. Thanks to our audience, which is you. Now go back to your homes and prepare to publish. Thank you. <laughs>